I, I do engineering and you know and manufacturing and that kind of thing. <laughs> Introvert's biggest fear. Let's have a chat. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. Let us have a discussion. As I say these words, I can literally feel the anxiety and the stress of every introvert <laughs> watching this video right now. But don't stress, bro. I feel your pain, right? You are not alone. You are not the only one in this world that absolutely fears having a conversation, especially with a random stranger. That shit can be terrifying. And this is especially true if you are an introvert, or even worse, if you suffer with something like social anxiety. That shit is stressful as hell. Or maybe you were just a really weird ass kid like me, right? Yeah. Yeah. The kid that was just obsessed with talking about Star Wars, Harry Potter, and dinosaurs. That was pretty much my repertoire all the time, every time you had a conversation with- Oh, he just like me. He just like me, for real. Let's stay away from the weird kid, right? That was me. I was that weird, awkward, socially inept child, like growing up. And, you know, with a little bit of training and a little bit of help here and there, and that's the help that I'm trying to give you in this video, I would say that I am pretty confident in my social abilities. And I've been able to create this almost extroverted character. But to all my introverted brothers and sisters watching this video today, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but social connection and more than that, being able to have conversations with people that you know and people that you don't. This is starting to sound like a, a Selena Gomez song. Those are people, can go from people, you know, to people you don't. I'm pretty sure those are the lyrics, but. <laughs> but the fact is relationships, they're everything, right? If you do not have loving, strong connections in your life, your life will never be as rich or full as it should be. So in order for you to have this love in your life, these connections, these strong friendships and bonds and, and family ties, you need to learn how to have conversation. But more importantly than that, I don't want you to just learn conversation. I want you to be a master at conversation. But to do that, you gotta learn how to open this mouth of yours and say some words that make an impact. So in this video, I am going to give you five of the most simple, but most effective and powerful techniques that I've used to transform my social life, right? And if you use these social techniques, so to speak, you'll not only be able to talk to pretty much anybody you wanna to talk to, but more than that, you'll be able to really stand out in people's minds. The kind of conversations I want you to have will be genuine, unique and powerful. But before we get into these tactics, I think it's important just to kind of explain why we feel such anxiety and stress when it comes to socializing with other people. If you think back to our ancestry, when we were still living in the mountains, there was the ever-present threat of you being either murdered by other animals, the environment, or people that were not from your tribe. And this is why you are so scared to socialize with strangers. And when you did occasionally come across another tribe, back in this ancient, more uncivilized time, you'd go up to somebody and say, hey, nice weather we're having. Bah, they'd kill you and then they'd take everything you had. So we naturally evolved to be cautious of people. And unfortunately, even though the world we live in right now is very safe, I mean, it's more safe than it's ever been before. And your chances of being bludgeoned to death by talking to a stranger are pretty, pretty low. And so we are living out our ancestors' fears by talking to others. So every time we see that pretty girl that we want to talk to or that person that just looks like they'd make an incredible friend, our little genetics and ancestry starts screaming in our ear, no, danger, that person could be dangerous. And this is something that you gotta give yourself a break for because it is a part of your genetics. It means well, it's trying to protect you, but it no longer serves you. And you need to get over this fear in order to have that amazing social life that we want, right? And that little history lesson brings me to step number one. And that is the realization that the reason you are so afraid to talk to people is simply because you give your brain too much time to outsmart yourself and to convince you that talking to that person is a bad idea. Your mind all of a sudden starts making up a million and one excuses as to why talking to this person is a terrible idea, but it's not. To fix this problem, you simply need to act 
before your brain starts acting for you. And to do this, I like to use a very famous and very powerful technique by an incredible author named Mel Robbins, who wrote a book on this technique actually. And this technique is called the five second rule. And simply put, all you have to do is every time you see a person you want to talk to, that looks interesting, that you wanna strike up a conversation with, you just immediately, before your brain starts thinking all of the excuses as to why you shouldn't do it, you need to start counting down to five as though you were a rocket ship about to launch, right? So see that girl, see that guy, oh, they look interesting, I'd like to talk to them. Okay, cool. Five, four, three, two, one. You get off your chair, you get off your ass, and you walk up to that person. You don't plan anything. You don't plan what to say. You don't plan what to think. You just make it your priority to walk up to that person and say hello. Hi, my name is Niall. How are you? And that's it. And congratulations, you have entered a conversation. Now what? Now you're starting to panic and say, oh, what do I say to this person? What do I think? Do I compliment them? Do I ask them where the bathroom is? Again, your brain is jumping in the way, but more importantly, and this brings us to the second strategy of this video, the reason you are battling to talk in a conversation or the reason that you feel so uptight and nervous is simply because, <laughs> how do I put this nicely? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna say it. You are selfish, right? And at first you're gonna be like, well, fuck you, bro. You're selfish too, but hear me out for a second. We're all selfish when it comes to conversations. And when I say we are selfish in conversations, what I mean is that instead of focusing on the other person, in getting to know another person and being genuinely interested in that person, the only thing we tend to think of is, how do I look? How smart am I coming across to this person? Do they like me? Do they think I'm an idiot? Do they wanna get away from me as fast as possible? Your dumbass brain is starting to trick you again and it's starting to convince you that you need to appear and present yourself in a certain way to be accepted. But why? Because the last time I checked, you are not in a job interview right now. You are not trying to sell yourself to this person. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. And if you are, you are more than likely coming across as needy, as desperate, as somebody that wants to be accepted, a people pleaser. And that's not what you want in a conversation. You need to realize that the reason you are entering this conversation is to get to know somebody. It's to find out more about them. What are their interests? What are they like? What are they doing here, you know? Your interest and your curiosity should drive pretty much every conversation that you have. A person's favorite topic is themselves. This is a cliche quote, but I promise you, when you internalize this quote and you realize how true it is, your social life will transform because it's so damn true. Therefore, if a person's favorite topic is themselves and you enter a conversation with them being interested in themselves or them, you both have a shared interest. Like you both are interested in them and that will literally make them instantly warm up to you and instantly connect with you. But there's also a catch to this. Do not fake interest in another person. People are smarter than you realize and they are so much more sensitive, shall we say, to the intentions of another person. Again, we've evolved to be this way so that we can kind of sniff out people's ill intent. And then I start to smell them. So it's like a smell like tastes like, I was like, so I knew something was wrong. I knew something special about it. You know, That's right? You'll have that feeling when you're around somebody and you just kind of get this feeling like this person is being just disingenuous. They're not being authentic with me. And that actually repels you from them even more. Be genuinely interested in them. And if you are not interested in the other person and there's nothing that you want to ask them, don't fake it. Just leave the conversation and go find somebody that you are interested in for real. When you are asking a person questions because you're interested in them, you tend to come off sometimes as an interviewer, right? It like becomes that whole job situation where you're just asking the person one question after the other and just a million questions later, this person starts to feel like, okay, I feel like I'm in an interview. This is kind of boring. I feel very analyzed right now. And it just gets boring for lack of a better term. To fix this problem is relatively simple. Because all you have to do is, instead of asking them a question about themselves, make an assumption about them. I'm not sure why, but you strike me as somebody that just knows how to make a really good meal. Or I've always seen you as somebody that's like so athletic. I'm assuming you played like a lot of sports at school, right? This works so damn well because one of two things are going to happen, right? The first thing is that you're wrong about the assumption, but don't panic, this is perfectly fine. They'll correct you and say, no, not really, I'm actually a, a pretty terrible cook, to be honest. But then, this literally opens the door for you to either make a funny comment, a joke, or to use another leading question into another conversation. So for example, they tell you they can't cook, and so you say, I always thought that you might be Italian, and I know that Italians can cook really, really well. 
And then the person will say to you, actually, no, I'm not Italian, but I'm from France, right? And boom, oh, damn, France, that's pretty cool. What's it like in France? And voila, you're back into the conversation. Or you actually get the assumption right and suddenly this person is your best friend and they think you're a genius, they think you're a psychic and they wanna marry you and have your kids and life is pretty good. <laughs> So try to sprinkle in a little assumption or two during a pretty mundane, boring, question-filled conversation and just watch in amazement as to how positively people will respond to your unique ability to talk to them. This brings me to step number four, and this is to show praise or to give people genuine compliments. You smart, you loyal, you grateful. I appreciate that. I don't know if you just heard my chair creaking. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You don't want to be inauthentic with the compliments you give people because again, they'll sniff out the bullshit a mile away and they'll say, and it's actually, honestly, it's worse than questions because if you give somebody a fake compliment and it's not genuine, they're going to look at you and be like, Ugh, like, what does this person want? Like, what are they trying to sell me? And that is not a good vibe to go for. Again, the more specific, genuine, and even creative the compliment is, the better it's going to work on the relationship you have with that person. As an example, I was once complimented on the shape of my nose. And at first I was like, what the f well, what kind of compliment was that? You, I've never ever had somebody or seen somebody compliment somebody else's nose. I'll never forget that compliment. I will always remember the person who complimented the shape of my nose. And after a while, honestly, I was like, yeah, I got a sick nose, bro. Like that really boosted my confidence. And I can honestly thank that person for giving me that really honest, genuine, and kind of strange compliment. So instead of telling that pretty girl that she has such pretty eyes and her eyes sparkle like diamonds, which is kind of more unique than pretty eyes, but don't do that chance, <laughs> it's just not a good idea. <laughs> but instead of telling them something basic and plain and boring, tell them something like, you know, I saw you talking to that other person there and just the way you were so kind and warm and loving to them, it was just really nice to see. And if I'm being honest, you've inspired me to be kinder and warmer to other people. So thanks for that. And the final step is specifically designed for my introverted brothers and sisters out there that are deathly afraid of the big bad wolf, which is awkward silence. the space to say something just anything to fill the space but you end up saying something dumb like yeah, yeah pink pink elephants are kind of cool i guess and and yeah circuses are fun and then it's like what the fuck are you saying <laughs> this advice may be very difficult to follow but hang in there because step five is to simply embrace the silence allow it to be and simply observe your surrounding what bro what are you talking about be honest with me right if you and I were in a conversation right now and I just wouldn't shut the fuck up <laughs> and I just asked you question after question after damn question without ever giving you a chance to contribute to the conversation or speak, what's your opinion on politics? Nice weather we have. What kind of weather is your favorite? What's your favorite food? Why does the Pope shit in the woods? Do you like me? Are you even enjoying this conversation? Help me, tell me, just give me the answer right now. <laughs> Silence is power because you are allowing other people to feel as though they are earning their keep, so to speak in the conversation. But more than that, you also stop being such a damn control freak and you simply allow the conversation to flow in whichever direction it flows in. And honestly, if the silence is too much in this particular conversation, you can kind of assume you and this person are not really vibing well and you simply thank them for the conversation and you move on to somebody that you click with better and there won't be as much awkward silence. And the reason I suggest that you should observe your environments during the awkward silence is because you and that other person are probably sharing the same environment right now. And that will inevitably lead you to finding something else to talk about. It'll bring up a pretty obvious conversation starter. Wow, I've never realized how beautiful this place was in the summer. And boom, you're off to the races again. And boom, just when you thought this video was over, here's a little bonus tip for you beautiful people that decided to stick around. And I really appreciate you hanging on there. You're really helping me out so much. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna do the YouTube thing now. Hit the bell notification. <laughs> and share this video with a friend that 
may need this advice desperately, just like we have, right? Help a, a shy and introverted brother and sister out today. Every single person you encounter is a human being, right? And that means we all have our own insecurities, we have our own problems. Just remember that every time you enter a conversation with somebody, they aren't God, they aren't this beautiful divine being that you need to worship to get along with. Realize that they've also got their own past traumas and difficulties and insecurities and shortcomings, just like you. Interacting with others and forming strong and meaningful connections is much less about impressing and proving yourself to others and more about your shared humanity. The social anxiety is worth it, guys. Talk to people today, get chatting, and realize that you're worthy of love and you are worthy of strong, meaningful relationships.